Okay, we're filming with the new uh, S7, or new to me. Doesn't have the fastest focusing, but it's not bad. I am running, or er, see, running a 1500 watt heater, a 750 watt heater, about 300 watts of fluorescent lights. Uh, the fans on this unit has turned on. Oh, and we're charging these batteries here, as you can see. So we are really pulling some power because we actually got a lot of wind power today. I was fully charged and it was, it was uh, free spinning and it was hitting almost 300 volts. Um, and I've seen for like one minute sustained periods, it was hitting uh, well over 300 watts. Um, so we'll see what we get. I'm gonna hit record on this and do a little time lapse. We'll see how it goes. Well, we're making lots of power today. Four, six. Yeah, we're not uh, not doing too bad. It's gusty. I I really need to get it higher in the air. Like you should see this wind turbine. Actually, I will show you. Uh, I also lost my my tent garage today. The wind took it, which sucks. It goes again. Anyways, I'm gonna show you guys what's going on. Doing some oil changes. And it's extremely windy out. Here's the wind turbine. It's spinning pretty good, but you can see it tracking like crazy. It is not ideal. making power. It's actually impressive what kind of power it can make in such dirty winds. Yeah, it's working pretty good. We got the moon out. But, uh, lost the tent, flew away on me. Had it, uh, pinned on all, cor all uh, legs with an 8 inch screw going into the asphalt, but it wasn't enough. The wind still grabbed it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Right, well, we got this 1500 watt heater and it is running off of solar. Well, it's running off my 3.8 kilowatt mobile battery bank that I use for camping and stuff. I'll bring you out to it and show you. <laughs> Squeaky door hinges. It's the cheap way of having your own security system. <laughs> There's the leftover of my tent that had blown away by the wind. We had some retarded winds. It's making tons of power with the wind turbine and, well, took away my tent. The fans just turned off on this inverter. This is what is running that heater. It's 56.8 volts under load. Here you're 25 volts out. <coughs> this is the first 2000 watt inverter that Reliable uh, Electric sent me. It was a 48 volt model when I ordered a 60 volt model. So I complained to them and for 150 bucks they sent me a 60 volt model. So, that was a decent deal. <clears throat> I had to replace this uh, this buck charge controller because the one that was here, I don't I don't know what it was. I think the fan was slowing down. I don't know what happened exactly. I'm pretty sure the fan started failing because it was really quiet. I could barely hear it, but I looked and the fan was still spinning, so I was like, oh, it must be working. Then uh, one day, the screen was still on but it was not outputting and it was still sunny and uh, I could smell something coming from it so I, I replaced it with this one this one's working fine and I took the other one apart and I'm going to show you exactly what was wrong with it <coughs> okay <coughs> got the trusty 
uh, Chevy Volt batteries there. <coughs> Check it out, guys. I got my number three wire run. Still got. I bought a bag from Home Depot with more of the these things on it and a bunch of other stuff I needed to to finish this wiring up. I lost the bag. I do not know where it is. We've we've been. Uh, working on a bunch of different things and cleaning up we moved a bunch of stuff and I can't find it so I gotta spend some time and retract my steps to this tiny little bag it's just gone we made 14.5 <coughs> kilowatts today we could have made more but I hit full charge in the batteries and then I put a 1500 watt heater on and I'm, my system's easily capable of putting about 3500 watts through this charge controller so I should have been running two but the problem is I got one extension cord going into the house right now that's how I power just my living room until I get this number three wire all hooked up so I can't run more than 1500 watts so I was limited to that today <coughs> this inverter has done me really good so far so if you average about 10 kilowatts a day so I, I do about I do about 20, 25 in the in the summer, and as low as two in the winter. But I mean, there's more sunny days than not. So if you average 10 kilowatts a day, that's how much I put through this, which is pretty good. Um, this is about oh, off the top of my head, seven or eight months old now. It's doing quite well. Oh yeah, and that charge controller that broke. Here. Oh. There it is. <coughs> so we got the front. We got totally burnt PCB board. But I think that's just because everything got so stinking hot. Like this is a tiny heatsink. Even the let's see that. Even that little insulation plastic piece just melted the pieces. This one looks okay, uh, but this one's shot. Same with this one here. That one there is shot. The screen still comes on when you hook this up, but it doesn't work. So, yeah. Very interesting. <coughs> well, even even this, uh, this current shunt thing, whatever that is, if you can see... Is burnt up pretty good so maybe it was just pushing too much current or maybe it just got too hot because the fan failed there's a lot of junk in this fan if you can see it who knows anyways someone wants me to make do a 12 volt version of the Nissan Leaf oh this is going in the garbage <coughs> uh, test on the Nissan Leaf batteries 12 volts uh, it's a little bit difficult because there's a that's 2s and that's 2s. They put two together, you're you're 16.8 volts. Where these cells are super easy to do 12 volts because it's just three, three point or 4.2 volts, 4.2 volts, 4.2 volts, which work out. But I'm still gonna do that that uh, Nissan Leaf battery test because I got two extra cells here. It's actually four cells, but uh, modules, anyways. And we'll see what these put out. And still got to do more hooking up. I've been working a lot. I need to work a lot right now. I've been spending too much money on this stuff. Um, there goes the fans again on that reliable inverter. The fans on this inverter work well too, actually. When I did a discharge test through these batteries, got about 550 watt hours with three. So if you had six, you're looking at 11 or 1.1 kilowatts. If you have 12, you're looking at 2.2 kilowatts. So, yeah, where this, this is uh, approximately, what did I say, 4 kilowatts right here. That's about a 1000 bucks for all these batteries. <coughs> um, it wasn't like the cheapest. Uh, there is deals that are cheaper, but they're really hard to find, really hard. So I picked this one up. Uh, it's been working out great. Uh, somebody wants me to put a link for the BMS. In the description which I'll do on this video and yeah it's just been working great it's only a 30 amp BMS but it works really good 
all my BMS boards have been working flawlessly. And they're also great because they act like a fuse. It's like a, a $20 fuse. If you, if you put too much current through this, the MOSFETs crack, open circuit, fuse. Unless you have too small a wire, then it doesn't work that way. But uh, the, the whole bank, everything's working great. I just topped these up today. You can see I re-hooked it up. The breaker's on. I unhooked this fuse. So I'm actually going to turn the breaker off for extra security. So in case somebody decides they want to hook that up. Yeah, I might be relocating this uh, essential vac to the other side just so I can I can I want to put fireproof drywall on this because that is my house. This is uh, the garage area, and uh, same with the ceiling. I want to put uh, fireproof insulation. Give okay, just a little bit extra time in case anything ever happened in this room. I've been actually looking into like a little fire sus sus suppression system. Um, not like it would actually stop the fire, it would just slow it down. Uh, just because I, I was thinking about doing all this in my shed, but it's it's a big pain to get the power from the shed into here properly uh, by code. So this DC side is all done by me, it's just got to be tidied up. I'm going to be replacing all of these soon with these. It looks much better. If I can get rid of all these hang, hanging wires, it would look so much better. I can actually cut these down, use them for the same purpose, recrimp. Sorry about my last video, it just cut out on me because my uh, camera battery died. But this is inside my house. This is where my number three wire right there is running into. And because inside your house, because uh, the power coming from uh, my system uh, needs to have a disconnect uh, before it goes into a panel so I have my big giant disconnect here <coughs> 100 amp disconnect uh, yeah I got two 60 amp generator panels um, I'm gonna split my my loads in of my house uh, so I'll have my mains coming in and uh, I'm gonna have two 60 amp breakers in my panel, which will, one 60 amp breaker will feed this generator panel, one 60 amp breaker will feed this generator panel. That'll be for grid use. And then when I'm running off grid, I will uh, shut those two breakers off, which I don't have to do, but I will anyways. Uh, I'll turn, I'll shut the grid breaker off right here. That's where this thing comes in, it only lets one breaker on at a time, but I'm just going to remove that. So this one breaker will be from uh, the grid. This breaker will be from solar. And with this contraption in between them, you can see that you, you can't have them both on at the same time because this is in the way. You have to either pick one or the other. <coughs> and same goes for this one. Uh, I'll pick one side or the other to have it on. Uh, it has the same uh, rotating blocking uh, little piece of metal here, but so I'll be able to take half my house off grid, this house half of my house off grid, or all of my house off grid, depending because uh, who knows? Maybe in winter I have say a month of really bad weather and I don't want to be running a generator all the time when I have grid so I can say well I got enough power to run half my house so I'm gonna run half my house or maybe this half of the house takes a little bit more power than this half of the house so maybe I'll run that half of the house on the grid this half of the house on solar and that's uh, my idea anyways um, missing a lot of stuff still uh, I still got to <sighs> run the wires from here into here for all the circuits and here split them and uh, install the breakers and do all this stuff but I think it's looking pretty good if you guys get an overview this is uh, the generator panel front here that's gonna be going on there so that will be up here I think it's gonna look real nice here 
anyways, thanks for watching guys. Just a quick update on how things are going. I'm doing lots of work. I'm just not showing it all. Um, putting this stuff together, I think, is probably pretty boring. It's pretty straightforward. Like, let's see here. There we got the number three coming in to the massive disconnect. And then there's your number three. Your ground that goes with it. it goes into the next panel. There we go. Um, I don't know if this will open. There we go. Now we got that. It's a. Uh, and then that goes to each, each, uh, we got the number three coming in here. And we got our number six going, number six to this panel, number six to this panel. <sighs> yeah, everything's looking really good. I got uh, my wire ready to go, to go into there with the 60 amp breakers. It's just, uh, I'm missing that little bag of stuff I bought, which I would really like to find, because I don't want to have to go buy it again. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys.